Coney Mountain offers great views and a bit of history. The view from the open rock summit of Coney spans 360 degrees, but it's the outlook to the east, towards the high peaks, that allowed Coney to play an outsized role in the surveying and mapping of the Adirondacks. Way back in 1772, one of the first surveys of the central Adirondacks was undertaken to establish a boundary for the vast tract known as the Totten and Crossfield Patent. Working their way northwest from a starting point near Wells, the surveyors placed a marker at the northwest corner of the tract, south and west of Cranberry Lake. There they turned towards the northeast, and using nothing but surveyors' chains and a compass, beat their way through 27 miles of untracked wilderness to stand on a ridge just below the summit of Coney Mountain. This was only about halfway along the northern boundary of the tract, but looking northeast, they could see the remainder of their route, and they called it good. The original survey work was mostly lost until the marker at the northwest corner was rediscovered by a party led by Verplank Colvin in 1872. The dramatic story of how the corner was relocated was told in Colvin's field notes, and that point became known as Colvin's Great Corner. But the northern boundary of the Totten and Crossfield tract, running from Colvin's Great Corner over the top of Coney Mountain and crossing Lower Preston Pond at the southern edge of the high peaks, was not fully surveyed until 1903. That's when money appropriated by the New York State Legislature was used to fund a resurvey of this critical boundary. That effort firmly established the boundary between Hamilton, Franklin, and St. Lawrence counties and settled property disputes, both public and private. Those 1903 surveyors wanted to make sure their work would not be lost. So steel I-beams were sunk into the earth every quarter mile or so along the 50-mile swath they cut through the forest. These markers still stand, and as a point of historical interest, we can still see them. Most are deep in the forest, requiring bushwhacking and searching. Which brings us back to Coney Mountain. Two of the markers on the slopes of Coney Mountain can be found with relative ease. These markers lie right on an old path that led to the top of Coney before the current trail was established. You'll have to leave the trail to find them, and I don't encourage that. But for those of you who want to do it, against my advice, they are not hard to find. 